All right, so I got an update here for you guys on Mississippi's water crisis, where it appears like we have a little bit of good news in the short term, in the sense that they have their basic water pressure up and functioning again, still don't have uh, reliable, clean water access for the hundreds of thousands of people living in Jackson, Mississippi. But beyond that, we've also gotten some pretty alarming statements over the last couple of days from the right-wing reactionary governor, Tate Reeves, in Mississippi, who has come out and suggested that in the long term, one of the solutions that he would be considering is the privatization of the water systems within Mississippi. Just an absolutely, uh, absolutely unmitigated disaster. So here from Common Dreams, we got a breakdown from uh, Kenny Stancil. He says, can't be allowed. Alarm as Mississippi governor floats privatization of Jackson water systems. So he says, water pressure has been restored in Jackson, but residents of Mississippi's capital still lack safe drinking water and must now contend with the threat of privatization, an idea floated by Republican Governor Tate Reeves and denounced by critics on Monday. And they say, although the risk with respect to quantity of water has not been eliminated, it has been significantly reduced, Reeves said at a Labor Day press conference in the city. People in Jackson can trust that the water will come out of the faucet, toilets can be flushed, and fires can be put out, but you still have that boil water notice that is in effect right now, and people still don't even have access to just the basics of clean uh, drinking water or water to actually like bathe themselves with. So it's still an absolute crisis in full effect and I wanted to show you guys this uh, short little video here from what it's looking like for average working-class people in terms of trying to get access to reliable safe drinking water so this was just a video of a uh of a uh, massive line that was down in Jackson, Mississippi, of people just waiting to get water, okay? So we are living in the wealthiest country in the history of the world, and yet this is what average working class people are having to deal with in terms of just getting ba something basic that should be considered a fundamental human right in uh, safe, clean drinking water. So uh, that's what it's looking like on the ground. There was also an interesting uh, story that came out a couple days ago that I didn't get to include in my first video covering this, just to put an emphasis in terms of how this current crisis that Jackson Mississippi residents are facing ties into the fact that uh, Jackson, Mississippi just so happens to be an overwhelmingly disproportionately black city and uh, how that ties into this Republican current governor and the history of uh, Republican control in this state uh, systemically under investing in this black city uh, along racial lines. And this is just one component of that, which just put it over the top and made it absolutely clear and, uh, you know, out there for everybody to see how ridiculous this Republican governor Tate Reeves actually is. So so apparently, Governor Reeves did not invite the Jackson mayor, Chakwe A. Lumumba, to the emergency press conference, nor have the governor and the mayor spoken directly about the ongoing crisis. And they say, but Governor Reeves says the state is surging resources to the city. So apparently, they have been in contact since then, and uh, he actually ended up inviting him to a different uh, event to address the uh, current crisis there. But just the fact that the governor of this state didn't invite the mayor of the city that's having this crisis, basically just because of of political reasons because it happens to be a more left-wing black mayor in this city he just decides not to invite him to this just completely fucking insane and ridiculous um, obviously but uh, another interesting story that also ties into this systemic underinvestment in uh, largely black cities and a lot of these conservative states this is also the same motherfucker Tate Reeves who uh, literally sent back federal funding that was supposed to go and help people with housing assistance within Mississippi and he straight up said we don't want that liberal money and uh, sent it back and rejected using it, even though people in uh, Mississippi and especially Jackson, Mississippi are still facing a massive housing crisis as well. So he's as reactionary as it gets. He likes to push austerity on working class people, again, disproportionately uh, black communities within Mississippi. So this is nothing out of the ordinary for this guy. Just the fact that he's now adding this privatization aspect on top of this already insane situation makes it that much worse. But they continue here with this uh, Common Dreams article saying that while the immediate flood-induced emergency appears to have been contained, Reeves made it clear that when it comes to addressing the Jackson water system's long-standing issues, he is open to allowing for-profit maximizing corporations to take over a life-sustaining public good. And he said, privatization is on the table. Having a commission that oversees failed water systems, as they have in many states, is on the table. I'm open to ideas. So I don't know if this guy needs to go and look at what privatization has 
has done to basic public utilities in other states. You could look at the Texas power grid. You could look at the California power grid. Anywhere that private corporations are put in charge of running public utilities, it has been an absolutely unmitigated disaster for a very basic and fundamental reason. You do not want to have a profit incentive on something that be, should be considered a human right, right? Whether that comes to housing, whether that comes to uh, water systems, whether that comes to energy or broadband internet, any of these public utilities, anytime that you install a for-profit incentive within those industries, they are going to put profits ahead of the actual service. They are going to put profits at the expense of the actual people who need those public services. So in absolutely no situation whatsoever would it be a good thing to install more capitalism, more for-profit incentives within these industries. But that's exactly what it looks like this motherfucker wants to do. But they continue saying that flooding, made more common and intense by the fossil fuel-driven climate emergency, was the proximate cause of the recent loss of water pressure in Jackson, but disinvestment, the ultimate cause of the city's ongoing water crisis, can be traced back decades. And they say, as Judd Legum noted on Tuesday, the integration of public schools in the 1960s prompted an exodus of affluent whites from Jackson, eroding the city's economic resources, and Jackson's declining economic fortunes also prompted the departure of the middle class blacks causing an overall population decline, and the city went from over 200,000 people in 1980 to less than 150,000 people today, and more than a quarter of the population lives below the poverty line. A quarter of the population of the largest city in this state is living below the poverty line, and obviously if you compare a state like Mississippi on the national level to other states in terms of access to health care, uh, access to basic uh, public services, education, uh, poverty, they're basically the worst in the entire country, okay? There's like a handful of states that are worse uh, than them on some metrics. You're talking about other conservative states down south as well, but Mississippi across the board is pretty much like one of the worst states in terms of getting access to uh, basic services for the people. But they say that Mississippi is, of course, as I was just saying, the poorest state in the nation, but Jackson is even poorer than the state as a whole, and per capita income is just $21,906. And they say while the city's population and tax base shrunk, it still has 114 square miles of aging water infrastructure to maintain, and the state dominated by Republicans has been largely unwilling to help a city populated by black Democrats. In 2021, for example, intense storms left Jackson residents without drinking water for a month, and the city asked uh, the state for $47 million in funding for emergency repairs, and Mississippi allocated $3 million. Okay, so a tiny, tiny fraction of the actual money that was needed to to address just that crisis and now we're facing a similar situation right now in which they are also not getting the potentially couple billion dollars that they need in order to uh, fix the current problems that they are having with their water systems right now but they say on monday reeves acknowledged that there are indeed problems in jackson that are decades old on the order of one billion dollars to fix and the governor failed to mention however how the gop's refusal to provide financial support at the scale required has helped per perpetuate the dangerous status quo so again kind of ridiculous that you're coming out here and saying, well, this has been the result of decades long uh, underinvestment in Jackson, Mississippi, and yet you're not pro providing the actual uh, uh, benefits that people need in order to address the fucking crisis, right? So you guys have been in charge. Conservatives have been in charge of the state for basically the entirety of its existence. And you're turning around saying it's a funding problem. Well, yeah, you're the type of people, you, the pe people who are uh, running the government in Mississippi, you're the ones who should be providing that assistance that people need, and they're just refusing to do it. So they're pointing out kind of the problem and then uh, doubling down and exacerbating that same exact problem. And on top of that, now you have this added aspect of potential for privatization and installing the uh, profit motive in their water systems, which would just make this entire situation worse. Again, we're talking about one of the poorest cities in the entire country in Jackson, Mississippi. The problem here is you need more public investment, right? Because there has been decades of underinvestment from the public government. And uh, the solution to that apparently is to have private capital uh, join the conversation here and basically exploit the people of Jackson. Jackson, Mississippi, uh, for something that should, again, be considered a fundamental human right with water. But they continue here with another example of uh, how this is tied back with the racial history of Mississippi and how this is tied back with historic underinvestment and failures of uh, privatization in other systems as well. 
So they say this is a familiar territory for Reeves. Following the 2021 freeze that left Jackson residents without safe water for a month, the governor said that the city needs to do a better job collecting their water bill payments before they start going and asking everyone else to pony up more money. So again, we're talking about a city here that has been systemically and racially underinvested for decades. And this governor is turning around one of the poor cities in the entire country, definitely one of the poorest cities in his state. Okay. And he's turning around and saying, oh, the problem here is not a lack of public investment from the state or even from the federal government the problem here is actually these lazy jackson mississippi residents not paying their water bills or something like that completely fucking insane even just as a suggestion but it gets even more insane when you look at more of the details in terms of what the actual underlying problems here were with the payments of their water bills so they say however lagoon pointed out jackson struggles to collect fees for water and to raise enough revenue to pay for routine maintenance can be attributed to siemens a multi-billion dollar company uh, of the kind that Reeves has basically suggested uh, could alleviate the city's water crisis. And as he explained, in 2020 or in 2010, uh, Siemens, I'm sorry if I'm butchering the name pronounced there, but uh, I'm just going to say Siemens, began pitching Jackson officials to hire the company to install all new automated water meters and a new billing system. And this company would also make repairs to the city's water treatment plants and sewer lines. Where would the cash-strapped Jackson get the money for such a project? Uh, they assured Jackson that the project would more than pay for itself, and Jackson would have to pay Simeon's uh, $90 million, the largest contract in the city's history, but Simeon's promised the new system would generate $120 million in guaranteed savings in the first 15 years, and according to a lawsuit later filed by the city. So that's what they were promising. There are overwhelming returns, right? You're going to get more than your money back here, but what actually happened? They say, According to the city's lawsuit against the company, more than 20,000 water meters were installed incorrectly or were unable to transmit meter readings to the system. That was about one third of all the meters in the city. And worse, the new meters were also incompatible with the new billing system. And Siemens, it seems, has never paired the water meter and separate billing systems together using Jackson as a $90 million test case for an unproven system. So again, you want to talk about installing the profit motive in these types of uh, systems here, you have a case study example within the last couple of years. This was just back in 2021, where the same motherfucker, Tate Reeves, this Republican governor of Mississippi, decided to uh, facilitate the installment of working with this private corporation in order to help with water billing payments. And this company completely butchered the job, right? They fucked up the installation on one third of the water systems that they were supposed to be installing, the meter systems they were installing around the city. A full one third of them, just a catastrophic, unimaginably terrible failure on the part of this for-profit corporation. And now, after that failure, you have this same governor turning around and suggesting that the solution to the current problem in Jackson, Mississippi, is to potentially have another uh, capitalist enterprise step in to provide the capital to then further exploit the people of Jackson, Mississippi, and in all likelihood, continue to completely fuck up their water systems as this previous corporation just demonstrated. So, I mean, this is just a completely uh, ridiculous situation, and you really feel for the people in Jackson, Mississippi, who have faced literally decades of of discrimination and underinvestment, but instead of making uh, more significant uh, public investments in this city and giving them the relief that they need right now, they are choosing to go in the exact same direction that has led to the current crisis that these people are facing right now. So it's an absolutely insane situation. This demonstrates once again, I'll tie this back to the federal funding with the bipartisan infrastructure framework, how little and minuscule the actual aid relative to what is needed in a lot of the poorest states around this country um, actually is. You need much more substantial federal grants and federal money to be poured into a lot of these states in order for them to make the adequate investments necessary. But obviously beyond that, if you have a Republican reactionary governor like Tate Reeves, who doesn't even want to take federal money in many instances, as he did with the uh, housing money that he sent back to the federal government, then you know you just got to throw your hands up and say, what the fuck are these people supposed to do? Because this is intentional. It is obviously uh, you know along racial lines as it has been for, uh, throughout the entire history of uh, Mississippi. And so this is just the situation that you are facing right now in the United States. If you happen to live in a disproportionately uh, more minority uh, city, whether that's in Flint, Michigan, or whether that's in Jackson, Mississippi, then you are just not going to be provided the resources to get just the basic fucking necessities that it takes for people to live their lives.